Welcome back. In this section, we'll be talking about quadratic functions. Any quadratic function can be written in this form. ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c can be any real numbers. Just one little restriction here that a cannot be zero. And if you're wondering about that, and that's a good thing to be wondering about, why are we not allowing a to be zero? If we had a being zero, then that means that that x squared term would be gone and that all we'd be left with would be f of x equaling bx plus c. But we know that that's a linear function. And so in order to be a quadratic function, you need to have an x squared term. And that's why we're saying that x squared can't have a coefficient of zero. Now, when we're looking at these quadratic functions, every quadratic function will have the graph of a parabola. And that tells us a bunch of things. Number one, a parabola has either a minimum value, and that's if the parabola is opening upward, it would have an absolute minimum value, and that happens to be at the vertex, the ver vertex being the point where our parabola changes direction. If it was a parabola opening downward, then we would have at its vertex an absolute maximum value. And that's one nice thing about quadratic functions. We can maximize them or minimize them just by finding their vertex. One other nice thing to know about parabolas, of course, is that they have a symmetry. In this case, the line of symmetry for a parabola is the vertical line that passes through the vertex. So if you have a parabola and you find its vertex, and suppose you know that the vertex happens to be at the point hk, then you would have a line of symmetry going through the line x equals h. That would be our axis of symmetry, and that the left side and the right side of the parabola are symmetric across that vertical line. Now, nicely enough here, we already know, based on just the coefficient of x squared, whether our parabola would be one that's opening upward or opening downward. If it's a positive value for a, then that means you have a parabola that's opening upward. And if you're a parabola opening upward, then that means you must decrease followed by increasing and that you must have a minimum value, not a maximum value. On the other hand, if A were negative, you would be a parabola opening downward. That means you would increase followed by decreasing, and that at this vertex, that would be the point that you have a maximum value, not a minimum value. Now, you could, if you wanted to graph f of x, you can rewrite it in this form a times x minus h squared plus k. And you can do that by completing the square. And the reason why this helps us with graphing comes back to thinking in terms of transformations. This is the graph of x squared that's been shifted h units to the right. It's been stretched vertically by a factor of a, and if a happens to be negative, then also flipped. And then the plus k at the end means that we'll be shifting the graph upwards by k units. So how does that help us find our vertex? Well, we know for y equals x squared, the vertex would be at 0, 0. And so if we went h units to the right and then k units up, then our vertex would now be at the point hk. So if we can get our quadratic function into this form, then we can immediately identify where is the vertex for this parabola. Also notice that the a that's in our quadratic function here is the same a that's in the front of our quadratic function here, which means that we'll also be able to identify based on this coefficient whether it's a parabola opening upward or opening downward, which means, of course, whether it's got minimum values or maximum values. Okay, so I'm going to be graphing this parabola eventually, but I'm going to first have to get it into a form where I can find its vertex. And one thing just to keep in mind here before I do this, that 
we did do some completing of the square earlier, but when we did, we were looking at things that were just equations that had zero on one side of the equation. And so if we were looking at something like this and I said, could you complete the square? I would probably say that the easiest thing to first do would be to divide everybody by three. And because the one side of the equation is zero, then dividing by three would still leave zero on the other side of the equation. And then you can go ahead and complete the square and, and life is good. The problem with doing that here, of course, is that the left side of the equation is not zero. So if you decided to divide everybody by three, then on the left side, you'd have to remember all the way through all of your work that you don't have f of x anymore, you've got f of x divided by 3. And at the very end of it all, you would want to make sure that you get to the point where you have just f of x by itself. So at some point, the 3 that you divided everybody by, you're going to need to multiply everybody by it again to get rid of the 3 that you've now made in the denominator. So here for this kind of a scenario where it's not just an equation equals to 0, but an equation equal to f of x. In this sort of scenario, dividing everybody by 3 is probably not my best move. So instead, what I'm going to do is to factor out my 3. I'm not going to factor 3 out of everybody, just out of the first two terms. And the reason for that is the x squared and the x term, those will be part of my completing the square process. The plus 5 at the end, that won't be part of it, so I'll just leave it on the side, outside of that bracket, and I'll deal with it later. Okay, so we've got our 3 factored out. We have 3 times x squared plus 2x, and now for the completing the square side of things, finding our little coefficient that we need, or our little constant that we need to add in. Remember that we take the coefficient for the x term, the positive 2, and we'll cut it in half to get us positive 1, and then square that. 1 squared is 1. So 1 is the number that I'll be putting in. Now, here again is one place where I'm going to do things a little bit different than I did before. Um, in the past, I would do something like I'm adding 1 to the one side of the equation, so I must add 1 to the other side of the equation. The problem with that, of course, is the other side of the equation isn't just 0, it's f of x. So if I added 1 to the other side of the equation, I wouldn't have f of x anymore. I'd have f of x plus 1, and that's, again, not what I want. I want to have it so that I have f of x on one side throughout. So... That's not my plan here. I'm not going to add 1 to both sides. What I'll do instead will be to add 1 and then subtract 1. And by doing that, that's essentially the same thing as adding nothing. So what I have is equivalent to what was on the previous line. Now, the next part here is the writing our perfect square. The x squared 2x and the 1, all of that together will make up our perfect square, but this minus 1 is not part of the package, which means it's going to need to leave. You'll see right now here the minus 1 is inside these brackets, and so I need it to leave and go live with that plus 5 that's over there. Now, the problem, of course, is that the minus 1 is inside the bracket, and everybody inside the bracket is multiplied by 3. So when that negative 1 leaves my bracket, I have to remember to multiply it by the 3. So when I do this, I'll have minus 3 plus 5. And now we're pretty much finished, because the brackets, the x squared plus 2x plus 1, that's now our perfect square, x plus 1 whole thing squared. And the last two terms, the minus 3 and the plus 5, those simplify to give us 2. And so now we can say that this is something where it's a parabola, where the vertex is negative 1, 2, and the parabola happens to open upward because the coefficient is positive.
And so now we're ready to graph. Um, just one little aside here, which is the labeling of our function. Remember how I always request that when we graph a function that we should also label it with its equation. Uh, so when you're labeling it, you can choose to either label it with this expanded version of f of x or this completed square version of f of x. Both are the same, so you're able to label it with either of the two. All right, so let's graph. Our vertex is at negative 1, 2. And we know that it's a parabola opening upward. I'm going to label that important point. And now I'm going to label my function. f of x is equal to 3 times x plus 1 squared plus 2. And there we go. That's my parabola. So I can see here that it has a minimum value of 2. That happens when x is equal to negative 1. Now, there's a couple of other approaches that you can use for graphing a quadratic function that don't involve completing the square. Of course, you have to be able to do all of these possible techniques, and it's nice to have all of these at your fingertips because in some cases, completing the square might be easier. In others, using a formula might be easier. So for these, if we have a parabola, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, you can find the axis of symmetry with this little formula, that the axis of symmetry should be the vertical line x equals negative b over 2a. And once you know your axis of symmetry, then you know the x-coordinate for the vertex, because you know that for a parabola, wherever the axis of symmetry is, it passes through the vertex. So that means you now know the x-coordinate for the vertex, and if you want to find the y-value for the vertex, just take the x-value and put it into that function. So that's why I have here that the coordinates for the vertex are negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. Now, that's one approach, finding the axis of symmetry, then using that to find the vertex. And this will always work. No matter what you have for A and B and C, you will be able to find the axis of symmetry using this formula, and so therefore you will be able to find your vertex using this formula. Another way that's fast and easy is by finding the x-intercepts. So a fun fact about this would be that if you have a parabola that crosses the x-axis in two places, and if you were to find the midpoint for those two x-intercepts, that would be the x-value for where you have your vertex. So if you do find two x-intercepts, then the middle of those two x-intercepts, that's the x-coordinate for your vertex, and then you can also use that to find the y-value for your vertex. If, on the other hand, you've got a parabola where you find there's only one x-intercept, then that means the vertex is the x-intercept. And so there we go. Again, easy enough to find. The only problem would be the cases where you find parabolas that don't have any x-intercepts. So, for example, something like this graph has no x-intercepts, so trying to find a vertex that way would not be possible. You wouldn't be able to find your vertex uh, using that technique. So that's my little comment that I have there. Not every parabola crosses the x-axis, which means that this approach won't always work. But if you're looking at a quadratic function and you can see that it's one that would easily factor, in other words, you can easily find those x-intercepts, well, then you can also use that approach to easily find the vertex. Okay, so here we've got a function f of x, and we want to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and all the intercepts. And then further questions about it, about the maximum or minimum value, where it happens, and what the value is.
So I'm going to do this a couple of ways. I'm going to first do this using the formula approach. So if you were using the formula, you could say, well, the axis of symmetry should be the line x is equal to negative b over 2a. And here we know what a, b, and c are. a is positive 2, b is negative 8, and c is positive 6. So once we have that, finding our a, b, and c, we can now say that our axis of symmetry, x is equal to negative b, over 2a, which is positive 8 over 4, which is 2. So our axis of symmetry is the line x equals 2. And so now we can use that to find our vertex, because the vertex will have an x-coordinate of 2. And the y-value should be f of 2. And we can find that just by putting 2 into our function. So we have the vertex being 2, negative 2. The other part that we could also do here while we're uh, thinking about it is finding our intercepts. And so for our intercepts, we could find our x-intercepts, and we do that by letting the y-value be 0, or in other words, letting f of x be 0. And so that means we have 0 equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Here, since I've got it equal to 0, then I'll just divide everybody by 2 to make a nicer looking equation. And I can see that I've got two values for x. I can find x being 1 and x being 3. So that means I have two x-intercepts, 1, 0, and 3, 0. And for our y-intercept, y-intercepts happen when x is 0. And so, in other words, the y-intercept would be f of 0 putting in 0 for x, and we find that the y value is 6. So that means we have a y-intercept of 0, 6. I'm going to finish the rest of the question in just a moment, but while we're here, I wanted to point out one thing. You'll notice that we have our two x-intercepts, one of them being at x equals 1, and the other one being at x is equal to 3. And now you'll notice that the x-coordinate for the vertex, x equals 2, is exactly in the middle of those two x-intercepts. So if we had found our x-intercepts first, we could have then said, well, since the x-intercepts are at x equals 1 and 3, then the vertex must be when x equals 2, exactly in the middle. At which point we would also know the axis of symmetry, and we could quickly find our y-value for the vertex as well. Now the last part about this is about minimum and maximum values. And one thing that we know is that the parabola opens up and so that means that we have a minimum value And the minimum happens at the vertex. So here, our vertex was the point 2, negative 2. The y value, that's the minimum value. The x coordinate, that's where the minimum happens. So I would say that we have an absolute minimum value of negative 2. And that happens when x is equal to positive 2. All right, one more to do here. We've got the graph of f of x is a parabola, so it's a quadratic function. 
we know where the vertex is. It's negative 2, 3, and it passes through the point 1, 1. So to begin with, we have two choices. Since f of x is a parabola, we could start off by saying f of x should be ax squared plus bx plus c. Or we could start off by saying f of x is in this other form, the completed square form. This makes more sense for us to use because we do happen to know the vertex for our parabola, which means we would actually know two of these constants, the h and the k. Here, we don't know any of the values of a or b or c, so using that version of the quadratic function seems to be less useful here. So I'm going to start off with saying, well, I know f of x is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. And our vertex, the h and the k, are negative 2 and 3. So f of x should be a times x minus negative 2 plus 3. Now the other part that we know is that 1, 1 is a point that's on this parabola. And so that means that 1, 1 should satisfy this function. In other words, if x is equal to 1, then y should also be 1. Remember, f of 1, that's the y value when x is 1. Since 1, 1 is on the graph of this parabola, then I know if I have a value of 1 for y and a value of 1 for x, then the left side and the right side would be equal to each other. So now all I need to do is just solve this equation. Um, so here I've got 1 plus 2, which is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And now I just need to solve for a. So I found that a is negative 2 ninths, so my parabola is negative 2 ninths, x plus 2 squared, plus 3. Okay, so that's part of our work. Our work was finding the equation for f of x, and then the second part of our question was asking, again, about minimum and maximum values. Where are we increasing? Where are we decreasing? And so now I'm going to go back and remind myself that since this coefficient is negative, that means that this is a parabola that's opening downward. And if it's a parabola that's opening downward, then I should have a maximum value rather than a minimum value. And that I'm going to increase until I reach my maximum, and I'm going to decrease after I've reached my maximum. And that the maximum will happen at that vertex. So now I'll just summarize everything I have here. I can say since... a is negative, the parabola opens downward, so we have an absolute maximum value, and the absolute maximum value, that's our y value, which is 3, and that happens when x is negative 2, the x-coordinate for our vertex. So our vertex negative 2, 3, 3 is the absolute maximum value, and the value for x, that's where the, ver verte uh, that's where the vertex happens, that's where our absolute maximum happens. We also know that we're going to increase before the vertex, so that means we are increasing from far left up to negative 2, and then we're decreasing afterwards. And of course that makes sense because for you to increase and then decrease, that would give you that parabola shape of an opening downward parabola. 
So there we go. We've answered all of our questions. We've come up with our equation, f of x being negative 2 ninths x plus 2 squared plus 3. Because of that, because the negative 2 ninths, we know it's opening downward, so it has a maximum. So that means it first increases and then decreases.